the day before Biden was sworn in as president, the last day Trump was president, January 19th this year, when Republican U.S. Senator Richard Burr announced that the Justice Department had just told him he was not going to be criminally charged. <sighs> Back in May of last year, May 2020, the FBI had gotten a search warrant and had seized Senator Richard Burr's cell phone. That was a huge deal. I mean, Richard Burr is not only a sitting senator, he was the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee at the time. He had to resign from that post the day after the FBI raided him. And we soon learned what the investigation was about. A few months earlier, in February of last year, February 2020, while the COVID pandemic was just starting to emerge as a potentially serious threat to our country, while Richard Burr was serving as the Intelligence Committee chairman in the United States Senate, he suddenly personally dumped his whole stock portfolio. Um, he had an, a joint IRA account with his wife that had like $1.7 million or something in it. And he dropped, he liquidated all but one stock in their entire IRA, their entire joint IRA, 1.6 million plus. Sold it all. Now, you'll also recall there was a huge crash in the stock market in late February, as the scope of the COVID crisis became clear to everybody in the country, Senator Burr avoided losing his $1.6 million IRA in that crash because he had liquidated that IRA just the week before it happened. So how did he know to do that? Senator Burr had been under investigation for potentially using non-public information he had access to as a senator as the basis for that massive stock sale. And he denied it. He has denied it all along. He has said there was nothing special about why he sold those stocks at that time. There was nothing to see. And again, the Trump Justice Department told him the last day Trump was president, the last day of the Trump administration, that he would not be criminally charged. But uh, when it comes to the strength of that case, <laughs> look at this. This is today from ProPublica. Quote, in February 2020, a week before the coronavirus market crash, Senator Richard Burr of North Carolina dumped more than $1.6 million in stocks. After he did so, he called his brother-in-law that same day. According to a new Securities and Exchange Commission filing, the two men talked for 50 seconds. According to the SEC, Senator Burr had material, non-public information regarding the incoming economic impact of coronavirus. The very next minute after Senator Burr placed that call to his brother-in-law and they spoke for 50 seconds, the very next minute, Burr's brother-in-law called his own broker. So Burr liquidates his stock portfolio, calls his brother-in-law. One minute later, his brother-in-law calls, calls his broker too. ProPublica previously reported that Senator Burr's brother-in-law had dumped stock the same day that Senator Burr did, but it was previously unknown that the two men spoke that day and that their contact came just before the brother-in-law began the process of dumping stock himself. In these filings, the SEC also reveals that there is an ongoing insider trading investigation into both Senator Burr and his brother-in-law. In its filings, the SEC alleges that Burr had material non-public information about the economic impact of the coming coronavirus crisis based on his role at the time as chairman of the Intelligence Committee, as a member of the Health Committee, and through his former staffers who were directing key aspects of the government response to the virus. On the day Senator Burr called his brother-in-law, the brother sold between $97,000 and $280,000 worth of shares in six different companies, including several companies that were hit particularly hard in the market swoon and economic downturn that would start within days. The week after the trades, the market began its crash. In his roles in the Intelligence and Health Committees, Burr did have access to the government's most highly classified information about threats to America's security and public health concerns. Before his sell-off, Burr had assured the public that the federal government was well prepared to handle the virus. In a February 7th op-ed, he said, quote, the United States today is better prepared than ever before to face emerging public health threats like the coronavirus. That's what he was saying publicly. Meanwhile, he was selling all of his stock, calling his brother-in-law and saying, who knows what he said, but 50 seconds after the call, or one minute after the call, the brother-in-law sold all his stock too. Senator Burr did resign from the Intelligence Committee chairmanship after the FBI raided him last year. He also announced that he wouldn't run for re-election as a senator either. But part of his defense to this whole scandal was that it was, you know, a sheer coincidence that he and his brother-in-law sold off all their stock at the same time. 
His lawyer told ProPublica, she's been investigating this this whole time, his lawyer told ProPublica, quote, Senator Burr did not coordinate his decision to trade on February 13th with his brother-in-law, Mr. Fouth. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what his lawyer has been saying publicly. And no coordinate. Why would you even think these things are related? Yeah, why would you think these are related? Except for the part where Burr sold all his stock, called the dude, and one minute later, that dude sold all his stock too. Why would you say those things are related? But here's the bigger question, honestly. Why exactly did the Justice Department under Donald Trump conclude on Trump's last day in office that Senator Richard Burr should definitely not be criminally charged for this? We now know that Burr is under SEC investigation. But is the criminal charges possibility live again, given what the SEC is reporting in its public-facing filings about what they found about what he did?